What's happening? What's up? What's good? My name is DJ and this is Moving Company Hustle. Today in this video we're going to talk about robotics and the future of the moving industry. But before we hop into the video, as always, first things first, shout out to all the subscribers. Really appreciate everybody who's been rocking with the channel over the years. So if you guys have been following the channel over the last couple of years, I've talked about AI a lot. I follow all of the AI trends. I'm aware of all the AI softwares and I've even implemented AI into my moving operation. And that's gonna to continue to be a process here at Headband Movers. We wanna be the trendsetters in AI as far as moving companies. And I think that's really important that you educate yourself on AI if you wanna to continue to have a uh, competitive moving operation over the next 10 to 15 years in this industry. In this video, we're going to talk about NEO and I'm going to touch on some subjects that I think that is important for the moving industry. Let's jump right into this video. Let's go. So in this video, we're going to talk about NEO, the robot that could possibly change the way that we move. Imagine moving into a new home and never lifting a single box. Imagine your furniture being carried in by robots and your kitchen completely organized before you can even find your coffee maker. This is Neo, a humanoid robot designed to live with you, learn from you, and take care of all your chores. Now I want you guys to bear with me. Neo is not a moving robot, but this is gonna tie in to the future of robotics in the moving industry. Now this isn't a story just about robots. It's about how we're moving into the future, not just into homes, but a new kind of life. Neil comes from a company called One X Technologies, a robotics team out of Norway backed by OpenAI's founders. They call it the world's first consumer ready humanoid robot for your home. It's about five feet tall, weighs about 66 pounds, and can lift over 150 pounds. It's soft to the touch, moves quietly, and barely sounds louder than a refrigerator. It recognizes objects in the home, understands voice commands, and can handle everyday chores like folding laundry, doing dishes, or setting the table. But what really makes Neo fascinating isn't what it does, but what it represents. This isn't just about a cleaning robot that does your chores. It's the start of a new kind of labor, one that lives inside our homes. For years, we've automated thinking. Phones, assistants, AI chatbots, they do the mental work for us. Us. But now we're automating movement, physical effort, the stuff that used to take time, sweat, and energy. Neo is the next step in that evolution. The dream is effortless living, a world where we can come home and everything simply works. All the chores are done. No heavy lifting, no wasted motion, no wasted energy, just time for the things that matter the most. But here's the catch. Behind Neo's sleek design and movements, there's still a human being. Here's what most people don't realize. When Neo doesn't understand a task, it calls for help. It connects with what's called expert mode. That's when a real human often miles away, puts on a VR headset and takes control. They see what Neo sees. They can move its hands and perform tasks remotely. So when you see a demo of Neo folding clothes, picking up a cup or organizing a counter, sometimes it's not AI doing the work, it's another person. And that's where the story gets complicated. If someone is controlling your robot, that means someone is seeing through it. That's a live video feed from inside your home, your living room, your photos, your family. Now the company says that you guys will be in control of privacy limits, so no go zones, blurred faces, and uh, schedule access. But let's be honest, privacy isn't just about rules, it's about trust. You're giving a camera that has legs access to your home and sometimes a stranger will literally be looking through its eyes. Even if they're trained operators, that's still a big ask. And remember, what the company CEO said, if you don't have your data, we can't make the product better. That's the trade-off. Convenience for control. Then there's the question of how it actually works. In real life, Neo is cautious. It moves slowly on purpose because real homes are messy. They're unpredictable. Pets move, kids run, every room looks different. One early tester said it took the robot over one minute just to fetch a bottle from the fridge. That's not a failure. That's the challenge of building robots for the real world. They're learning every task, every mistake, every correction. It's all feedback into the system. Right now, you're not buying a full-time butler, you're buying a student, a robot that's still learning how to live like us. So here's where we're really going in 2025. We're in what's called the hybrid era, part human, part machine. Robots like Neo aren't fully autonomous, but they're not like toys either. They're partners in progress. When humans control them, they learn faster. When they learn faster, they get closer to working on their own. Experts say we're still about five to 10 years away from true autonomy, where a robot can completely operate without human backup. But then this is the world that we live in, a mix of intelligence, empathy, and electricity. The future isn't just AI, it's AI and us. Now, thanks for being patient with me, guys. I really wanted you to understand what Neo is. 
let's bring this back into moving. Now imagine moving into a home, not just with your family, but with your robot. A robot knows your voice, your habits, your morning routine. When you move, you just won't set up your Wi-Fi. You'll train your robot for your new home. So maybe moving companies will offer robot setup services, mapping out your house, connecting your systems, making sure your digital helper knows where everything is. Robot ready homes could be a selling point in real estate listings. And that's when you realize moving won't just mean changing addresses, it means changing the relationship between humans and machines. So maybe the future of moving isn't just about boxes and trucks. Maybe it's about movement itself, the movement of labor, of intelligence, of control. Because the question isn't if robots like Neo will move into our homes, the question is, who's really moving in with them? So next, I want to talk about how I envision robots in the moving industry. I think that we're very far from a robot being able to complete an entire move by itself. Moving is very challenging, and there's a lot of energy required. And I don't think that a robot as of right now, we'll be able to complete an entire move. With that said, I do think that autonomous robots, humanoid robots will play a major role in moving operations. And I think that moving companies that aren't aware of this and planning for this and budgeting for this are going to lose a large share of the market. So let's talk about what robots look like in the field. I think that the first steps are gonna be these humanoid robots that are controlled by somebody at headquarters. So imagine you have a team at your office in your headquarters that's just in control of the VR controlling the robots. The robots go to the house and they're in charge of packing the house. Now they won't be moving the furniture, they'll just be doing the packing. But the team in the office using their VR sets can tap into the robot to ensure that the robot is doing the pack at a very high level. But then eventually the robot's gonna learn how to do a pack, but it's going to need a professional packer that understands the process to train the robot. You have your team, your VR team, and your moving company. They're in control of the robot if it's required, but they're going through that training process with the robot in the beginning. And then eventually the robot will become autonomous and be able to pack an entire house. There's gonna be a lot of people that say this is a very unethical thing. Why would you put a robot in the field and not put an actual human in the field? There's gonna be a lot of people that lose their jobs. It's going to happen. These robots are gonna be very efficient. They're gonna do exactly what you tell them to do. They're gonna master the packing service. They're gonna get there, they're gonna get the job done, and they're not gonna damage anything. There is going to be a learning curve. There will be damages. The robot will make mistakes. Your claims will likely go up. But over time, the robot's gonna learn how to do the process, and it's gonna be able to master the process. People will lose their jobs. It's going to happen. My moving company, we're already having conversations about it. Me and my GM, we sit down and we talk about AI and robotics pretty much every day. The future is here, and we wanna be a part of it. We don't wanna be the moving company that's left behind. Will people lose their jobs? Yes, it's gonna happen. It's just the reality of AI and robotics. But that doesn't mean we're gonna fire everybody that works in our company. Our company is gonna become this hybrid moving company. We're gonna have humanoids, we're gonna have robots, and we're gonna have real people. It's gonna be this hybrid mix of robots and humans. Then eventually, as time goes on, the robots will learn harder tasks how to prep and wrap a piano and bring it down a flight of stairs and how to do it efficiently without damaging anything. And what does that mean? It means claims go down. It means workman comps claims go down as well. And it means you become more efficient and you become more profitable. I think about this a lot. I think about what it looks like to have a fully electric truck with an autonomous driver and you have robots in the back of the truck with charging stations. I think about efficiency and how this will really work in the moving industry. So right now people are using AI for automated systems to talk to their clients, to try to book jobs. And if we're being honest, I use a lot of those processes as well. We have the AI agent that you can talk to, but people don't like it. It's just like the people who call a bank and they talk to somebody in India. They don't like talking to somebody in India. And there's a lot of people right now, an overwhelmingly large amount of people that don't like booking a moving job talking to a robot. That's just the reality of it. Most people would rather talk to a real human, but eventually you're not gonna know if it's a human or an AI bot. I think that it's really important that you're starting to think now about how AI is going to affect the moving industry. And it's really important that you're using AI in your current operation right now. You can use AI chatbots, you can use AI software to streamline processes, 
You can use ChatGPT for content. There's a lot of different things that you can do with AI, but there's gonna be a lot of moving companies that say, hey, we're gonna continue to do things the old school way. And when you do that, you're really putting your company at risk. It's really important that you adapt with the times. There was a lot of moving companies that didn't even wanna use a CRM, but now they realize we're more profitable when we use a CRM. We're more efficient when we use a CRM. Using apps like Slack for communication, your entire team can communicate in one hub at one time. Technology evolves, moving companies evolve, and you need to evolve with the evolution of technology. Now I can sit here and we can talk about the future of robotics in the moving industry for another couple of hours, and I'm gonna do more videos on robotics and the future of AI in the moving industry because it, it fascinates me, but we're not gonna do that today. Let me know what you guys think of NEO. Do you think that it's something that you would want in your house? I'm already considering it. There is a bit of a privacy concern there, but I am willing to have a robot in my house to handle my basic chores. Now, the idea of somebody controlling that robot from a ro remote location really does concern me. I have kids, I have a wife, so I have those concerns like any other man. But I will tell you, it would be really great to be able to have a robot do the dishes, do the laundry, clean out the garage, and handle all those basic chores so I can spend more time with my family. So my wife can spend more time with the kids and not worry about the dishes. Or imagine having a, a robot that's a, a top tier chef, right? In your kitchen, cooking you these five star meals, cleaning up the mess, doing all the dishes. That way you can sit down with your family, have a meal, and then spend more time with your family or focus on the things that are most important in your life. So yo, that's all I got for you guys in this video. I have a lot more content coming. Uh, the next video I do is how to start a labor only moving company in 2026. We're also gonna be doing a deep dive on the FMCSA's Operation Protect Your Move. And then I got a couple more videos coming as well. We're really ramping things up in 2026 for Moving Company Hustle. I'm gonna have a lot of interviews and stuff coming up. The goal is to continue to give you guys as much free game and knowledge as I possibly can to help you start a moving company or scale your moving operation. Make sure you guys check out the website, the blog. I do uh, weekly updates on the blog, um, marketing tips, uh, a lot of really cool stuff. Um, we're gonna be doing more free courses. Like I said before, all of our courses will always be free and we wanna provide free education resources to anybody that's looking to start a moving company. The Discord, the Discord guys, the Discord is uh, slowly ramping up. I'm sending out another 10 invites and then inside the Discord, uh, we'll be doing weekly meetups two to three times a week where everybody can hop on a call. It'll be a, like a mastermind. We can all help each other with our problems, give each other advice. Uh, this is gonna be a great resource, a free resource to anybody who just wants to be a part of a community with other moving company owners. So yo, that's all I got for you guys today. Hope everybody's working hard, working smart, grinding, and not sweating the small stuff. I gotta go, man. I gotta go, man. Peace. Peace out, man.